This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The Lighting Source, major line distributor of commercial and industrial lighting, including hard-to-find bulbs and fixtures, as well as a broad range of LED products. With 35 years' experience servicing lighting needs, The Lighting Source proudly sponsors Sports Files. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is Memphis Tigers junior forward Shaq Goodwin. The month of October is upon us, the best month of the year. And I'm not just saying that because I was born in October, or it's the nicest weather but because the sports world aligns. The Major League Baseball postseason converges with the start of the NBA season. The college football campaign moves into critical conference play, and ice hockey teams begin the quest for the cup. The NFL season heats up, while college hoop teams open up camp, and NASCAR pushes closer towards their Sprint Cup champion. And there is no better time to swing the sticks. Later in the show, we'll hear from the Grizzlies, who are underway with their preseason schedule. But first, it's college hoops with the Tigers. Believe it or not, the Tigers began fall camp yesterday, and Memphis Madness is a week from this Saturday. Everyone is accounted for after the big news that Vanderbilt transfer Kedron Johnson will be eligible to play this season. The Tigers begin camp with more questions than answers, but one area of consistency is up front, where the dynamic duo of sophomore Austin Nichols and junior Shaq Goodwin return and are looking to lead the Tigers. Several months ago, Austin joined us here on Sports Files to talk about the upcoming season, and now Shaq's on the clock. So let me attempt to drive the lane against one Shaq Goodwin. It's next on Sports Files. Jack, thanks so much for being with us. No problem. No Appreciate problem. it. All right, let, let's talk about this boot camp thing that you recently went through. What was boot that like camp. for your team? Boot camp was something that I have never experienced that I would never forget. Starting out the first couple of days of it, you know, were absolutely well, the most challenging, you could say, because, um, you know, you, you have the team try, getting, getting uh, adjusted to the way, the, you know, the military holds their uh, boot camp because we're working out with the military. So just to see us come in and, you know, join together after those two two days and say we're going to come this third day and we're going to be there at 5:30 in the morning. That was a that was a blessing for me to see that because you know in the previous years we might have had somebody say, you know, oh man, I don't know if I'm going to make it in the morning. Or, right. This is too tough. But to see the team come together and say we're all going to do this together, no matter if he's tired or he's tired. So you pushed each other. Pushed each other. I seen us get pushed by each other. How oh, much tougher or was it tougher than a, a normal, let's say a normal workout for you guys? Definitely much more tougher. Uh, and I'm not just saying it just to say it, but you know, just it, it, it doesn't compare. It, it's different, it's different. It was a whole lot different. This year, different strength and conditioning coach. It's, it's a little bit different from when Frank was here. More with the weights, I would imagine, for you guys now? Right, right, more of the weights. Uh, just. Uh, I don't want to say just more in general, but just a bigger variety of things in general. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Frank, you know, not taking anything from Frank, because that's one of my good friends. Sure. But uh, Frank, Frank had us on one specific thing. Now we're, you know, now we have a variety of things that we can, you know, work on to get us better in a lot of other ways. So it's pretty beneficial. How good condition are you in as you get ready for a very important year, your junior year mm -hmm. with the Tigers? How good do you feel and how good the condition are you in? I'm ready. I can say that I'm ready and I know everybody on the team is ready, but of course we can always get better. You can always go from, you know, wherever you are to 10% better. So uh, I'm just working every day doing whatever my coaches ask and watching our, you know, progress grow as we go. Yeah, I know you're not going to make any predictions for the season, but you said let's, let's get our max potential. Let's get to that point. And if we do, good things will happen. That's right. And with the uh, with the boot camp, that helped us show that you know push through your threshold. 
you know, push through that wall. When you reach that mental block where you get, you know, mental clutter mm -hmm. or you start thinking negative thoughts, I can't do this, I can't do that, push through that. And that's what, that's what I think will help us toward the, you know, the beginning, the middle, and the end of the season. Last year, you had the senior-laden backcourt. You had four guys that were interchangeable. But I know at times there was probably chemistry issues with the team. You get to the tournament, you win a game, you get beat pretty badly by Virginia. I know there was some unfinished business. But was it rocky at times last year? Um, I would say it was, uh, it was difficult, but there's a lot, there's difficulty on, on any team. Mm -hmm. Uh, it wasn't nothing, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary that I would say, but it was a challenge throughout the whole year. Yes, it was. There's no question now, all these guys are gone. You're a junior. Mm -hmm. You've been around this program quite some time. Mm -hmm. You're one of the leaders. Are you ready to take that role and run with it? I am ready and I'm ready for two reasons. I'm ready because my personal self. Um, coming from the high school that I did come from, um, you know, the leader, the leader position was pretty much second nature for me. So, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like I welcome the challenge. But, um, and it's, it's, it's kind of put into place by my coaches, you know, my head coach, Coach Pastner. They need you to be a leader. They need me to be, to be a leader. And that's what I feel like they brought me here for, you know, come here and like Coach Pastner always says, to do my job. And if that's my job, then that's what I do. You've had some great moments in your first two years at Memphis, mm -hmm. um, and you've had times where you struggle a little bit on the court. Mm -hmm. What will it take to, to reach your, your mass potential? And we know that potential is very high. Mm -hmm. um, two things, uh, and I keep saying two things, but um, two things that stuck with me from high school that uh, one of my mentors told me, time management and organization. Uh, if I go into you know the year, the school year, even the school year, and go into the school year, great time management, Great time management, great organization, uh, it all fall into place. I'm just making sure I keep everything consistent and I'll be fine. You're here all summer long. A number of guys were, but there are some new additions as well. You went to Canada, you bonded there. Mm -hmm. How important is that? That's very important. My, uh, my first two years, Coach Pastner, well, pretty much, pretty, you know, more of my, my freshman year, but Coach Pastner to tell you, within the last two years, I did a lot of, you know, ready to go home and homesick this ready to go see my friends. But over the, over the summer and the Canada trip, I got a chance to, you know, bond, like you said, with my, with my brothers, my new brothers. You know, build relationships that you can say I didn't have a chance to build over the last couple of years because we didn't do these same mm -hmm. things. So it, it, it's very beneficial. You're such an outgoing guy. You got that great smile, it's infectious. Mm -hmm. On the court, we know that you want to lead by example, but also verbally. They need somebody to communicate. Are you ready to take that role as far as telling guys when they're slacking to get it going. Uh, if they're a, a youngster, a freshman maybe, that is not sure what's going on, to be able to lead them and put them in the right spot. Mm -hmm. I mean, you feel that other than just leading by example, can you lead verbally by example? Definitely, definitely. And I think uh, me and per se Nick King and Austin Nichols, right. we're doing a good job since we've been here. Well, I've been here the longest, but since they're right behind me with two years under their belt, uh, we're doing you know, we're doing all the necessary things with it, getting on people verbally, and nobody has had a negative response yet, you know. Uh, we, we pretty much have a team, like you said, that's new, so they're trying to find their way as we try trying to find our way. So we have a, a good listening, you know, good listening team. Right, you, you've had workouts, but now a, a week from this Saturday will be Memphis Madness and the start of practices. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a really important camp, I would imagine, because you do have a lot of new faces. You got junior college guys, you got freshmen, you have redshirt freshmen that did not play, like Pookie Powell, Markel Crawford, and then you got some veteran players like yourself. Still mm -hmm. a very young team, but you got a mesh, so you're gonna really need that time, aren't you? Yeah, that's right, that's right. But I don't I don't see a problem I don't see a problem with us meshing at all. If you look at, you know, the core group that's here, you know, I think we have five or maybe five returning players. I think it's a good return in five. Like you have, you know, you have forwards, you have, you know, wings, and you have guards that were here last year. Maybe not have played, but definitely practiced with the team. So I think the meshing part, that's that's the least of our worries. It's just being consistent that it get us where we need to go. You can give me the stock answer that, yeah, we're looking forward to the season. We feel we can do really well. You can give me that, or you can give me an honest to goodness answer to this question. A lot of new faces, a lot of meshing to happen. Last year, we know a team that was a top 25 preseason that didn't live up quite to the expectations. This year, I don't even know if you'll be a top 25 preseason team. How good can you be? We can be very good. I'm not just going to leave it at that. We can be very good. Why? I feel like, I feel in the past two years, you know, top 25 expectation or not, 
we never, they never, nobody ever gave us the expectation to get, you know, get to the Elite Eight or get to the Final Four. That never was, at least I never heard of it. I never heard of anybody say. So, you know, this year coming into it, you know, a lot of people say off the radar or, you know, not top 25, that's okay. Cause that's, you know, that we welcome that. As, welcome. as a player, so if you're not on the radar, it's more motivation than maybe if you, I know Josh always says that he loves to be ranked and, and loves to get that notification early on that uh, people are thinking about you around the country. Mm -hmm. But if I'm catching this right, you're saying, look, they're not thinking about us. We're going to sneak up on people. We'll fly under the radar and, and, and do very well. I'm saying thinking about us or not, what people are thinking isn't our focus. Mm, okay. Our focus is on us getting better, getting more consistent. What other people say doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. you got to go out there and prove it on the court. Right, because you know, people, opi people's opinions will change like they do every year. So we're not focused on what's going on outside the court. We focus on the coaching staff and the players that are, that are suiting up every night. One of the big questions coming into the season, maybe a, a month ago or six weeks ago, was, well, at point guard, again, you're losing all those senior guards, you're going to have a youngster playing, Pookie or Markell or whatever the case may be, Dominic McGee is a, a freshman coming in from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And then the team got a couple of transfers, one a guard mm -hmm. who's proven himself, Keedron Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, did not play last year but did uh, the year prior and had a very good year at Vanderbilt. How is he fitting into the mix? Uh, he's fitting real well. and. Um, he, he's, you know, he's really working his way back into things, being that he set out a year, you know, with the Vanderbilt. But um, he's fitting in real well. Even though we just, you know, we had our workouts to split up because we can't really have all the time with all the people because right. of the rules. But, you know, starting next week, we'll be able to get a good feel of all he can do. And I'm sure that he'll fit right on it. What did you learn from last year in the tournament after winning that first game, hard-fought game against GW, and then Virginia really exposing some things. Well, I know it was very disappointing uh, talking to you guys after the game in, in Carolina, but what did you learn from that? What can you take from that into this new season? The biggest thing I, I could say that I learned from that situation is that this is business. This is business. This, this college basketball, this is business. You know, coming, coming out of high school, I think that's where, you know, a lot of freshmen, there are a lot of freshmen, uh, you know, get off balance or run into that wall. Mm -hmm. When they come into it thinking that it's all fun and games, you know, you know, that it's a game. It's not a game. This is business. After that game, I realized, you know, you could splinter. You could have mind clutter. You know, you could argue with your team, but that's bad business. That's not going to get you where you need to be. So after that game, uh, talking to my teammates, the ones that left and the ones that came back, you know, we just all came together and said, you know, this is business. This is what we're going to do. We're going to do our jobs and we're going to do it right. So do you have a chip on your shoulder? Yes. Yes, definitely. The young players, as you said, they may come in and say, well, you know, hey, it's great to be in college. It's going to be pretty. You know, we were stars at our respective high schools. Mm -hmm. This is going to be easy. Right. And mm -hmm. even the JC guys, because junior right. college basketball, as you know, and, and big time division one are, are two different things. So is that now where it comes back to you and Austin and Nick leading the way to say, come on, wake up, guys, this is different. And, you know, we're, you know, I don't want to say we have to do it every day, but we remind them every chance we get, whether that be working out with the, with the Army, whether that be conditioning in the morning, whether that be weights or whether that's practice, we remind them every second of the day that it's not the same. Like, coming out of high school is not the same. Coming out of JUCO, junior college is not the same. But, like I said, we have a good listening team, so everybody's pretty much, you know, buying into the system. So it's a good look. How have you grown as a player, and how have you grown as a young man from your freshman year to now a junior? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of it from a player aspect would be, you know, just understanding that it's a business, more so a business. I mean, I could say a lot of things like uh, realizing that I need to be in shape or realizing that I can't come into a game with mental clutter, mm -hmm. realizing that I can't bring – outside problems onto the court, you right, know? Right. But it all comes down to understanding that it's a business. Understanding that you come in every day, you know, 10 minutes before you, well, 30 minutes before you have to be there and you do your job. You know, you come in. Don't be late. Don't be don't. late. Don't mess around with your workouts because what you get in is what you, what you put in is what you get out. Mm -hmm. uh, just understanding that, you know, reality. This is just understanding reality was my biggest thing. I guess you could say player and as a, as a young man. Mm -hmm. Just understand that reality is real. Your coach has stressed, among other things, that this team needs to get more f physical. It has to be more physical. Mm -hmm. Last year you got pushed around. The year prior, your freshman year, Michigan State, 
pushed around pretty good. Mm -hmm. You get into the NCAA tournament deep, you run into physical teams. And in this conference now, this new conference, you know it with Connecticut, <laughs> Cincinnati, and the like. Can you guys play more physical? I definitely know we can play more physical, and we will because with the, with the workouts that we have now, I'm not saying it's because of the workouts because in my mind, it's all mental. What you, how you play on the court is all mental. Um, but seeing, you know, the team go through the whole mental thing with the, with the boot camp, mm -hmm. mental thing with the morning conditioning, the morning weights, and, you know, seeing everybody push through it, that's going to carry over to the court. When somebody's pushing on you, you're going to push back. Right. You know, because that's what we've been doing throughout the whole year. And with players like me, Austin and Nick, like I said earlier, you know, uh, in their minds and telling them, you know, it's okay, keep pushing, go harder, then there's nothing but good results that could come from that. All right, I'm going to ask you to, to look into the crystal ball. Give me who you think will be the breakout player of those that have returned to the team and the breakout player of all the new guys, of all the new guys, including the JC guys as well. So would the red shirts be a new guy? Uh, yes, let's, let's put them as, uh, as new guys as well. Oh, man. I hate to single, you know, single Well, I know you think a lot out. of them will do right. well, but I mean, maybe, maybe one that fans should really keep an eye on. Okay, well, um, I'm going to say nobody sleep on Nick King because he's a hard worker, and he does, he does what he has to do. But Austin, Austin Nichols. He could be a lot better than he's been. Austin Nichols would be a problem this year. Austin Nichols would definitely be a problem. And that's a good thing, a problem for opponents. A problem for, uh, that's a good thing. That's a good problem. <laughs> okay, and of the new um, guys? The new guys, uh, um, I really like Chris Hawkins. Mm -hmm. you know, I hope I'm not speaking too soon, but the man jumps like DJ Steffens. The and man, plays physical. The man jumps like DJ Steffen <laughs> and plays physical. That's that's one of the, you know. Wow, jump like of, DJ Steffen. One of the craziest com combinations I've ever seen in my life. Like somebody that jumps that high and be 250 pounds and a bruiser. Mm -hmm. So that'll be interesting to watch. But besides him, uh, I got to go with Markel Crawford. Okay. You know, I'm not just going with him because I knew him prior to coming to college or that he's from Memphis, but the guy clearly works hard. He comes in every day. That's good to hear. Laces his shoes up. He's there 30 minutes early, 30 minutes after. All right, final question for you. Again, the madness starts a week from this Saturday. What, what do you got planned when Shaq Goodwin's name is introduced? Anything? You, you, uh, we going to get a little dance? We get a little... I try to leave, you know, all the dancing and, and, and all of that to the young folks. This goes back to the business thing, right? That's right. This is business. I'm not here to come out and do all the dance. But, of course, um, when I find my song is when I find out what I would do. Because I, I usually switch it up. I, I usually go with alternative music. Right. And you can't really go out there dancing to alternative <laughs> music. So... You know, I'm, I'm just figuring out my song, but I should have something lined up. We look, certainly look forward to seeing you at the Madness. We look forward to watching you uh, this season, your junior year. I know it's going to be a great year. Jack, thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. The Grizzlies are in Houston tonight after opening up the preseason last night against the Milwaukee Bucks in Green Bay. They'll play their first home preseason game Saturday against Atlanta. Last season, the Grizz were in survival mode after enduring everything from major changes in the front office to major injuries. And of course, a new head coach in Dave Yeager. The underdog Grizzlies would force a seventh game with Oklahoma City in round one of the playoffs, but a suspension to Zach Randolph for the decisive game would prove to be too much to overcome. Now it's a new season. There's the arrival of Vince Carter, rookies Jordan Adams and Jarnell Stokes, and many familiar faces. Zebo has already declared this team the best he's been with in Memphis, and that's saying a lot. So let's hear from some of the guys as they embark on year number 14 in the Bluff City. Well, we, have, we have good depth. We have good experience. Uh, guys keep getting uh, older but are not old yet, and uh, we have good experience, uh, good chemistry. Guys like each other. So. Um, you know, with, with uh, Courtney Lee having a, a training camp under his belt, with Quincy coming back, uh, and with Vince Carter's ability to make shots, that, that should help us uh, from the wing uh, so that teams don't cheat as much in the paint on Mark and Zach. I'm coming ready starting tomorrow. I think everybody has done a, a pretty good job coming in till today. Um, coming in ready and, uh, and in shape and physically um, 
I think everybody's healthy, which is always, that always helps. And uh, we're excited, you know. Uh, I'm I'm really excited, and I'm I can't wait to to start uh, not just tomorrow, but the games and uh, and the whole season. Is it is it expectation as to the roles and the way you're going to play is going to be established and jump is going to count? Well, you're asking the wrong guy. I mean, I don't, I'm not the one that establishes the roles, um, but uh, that's going to be defined um, in the next days, I'm sure. And, uh, and we all look forward to that. And uh, we, you know, we always got to um, put everything on our side and, and make it hard for for coach. I think we we all came back a little bit too early. You know, we were all excited to get the season started, and uh, going to San Diego is a good, I think, a good place, a good change of pace. Um, you know, destination for us, so we're excited about that. Last year, you know, we got a, a nasty, you know, taste in our mouth still because we felt like we should have won a series. I mean, we had it in our hands. I mean, a couple games here, a couple plays here, we could have went our way. So um, we got something to prove. We got, you know, a chip on our shoulder. So we just got to come out and just start them off. Start them off. Is it a good thing to take this trip? You guys have gone different places yeah. for training camp, but now you go all the way to San Diego. Is there. Do we make more of the bonding that goes when you go someplace else, or <clears throat> is this a chance to really get away and just focus on basketball and your teammates? I think, I think um, kind of combination of things. I mean, you could look at it like that. I mean, you know, work is work. Basketball court is a basketball court, no matter where you're at. And, and it's just it's, it's the guys to be a professional and, and locking in and understanding what we – it starts tomorrow and, and, and we go out there and practice, you know, watching film or, or drills or stations or whatever it might be. we got to go hard. We got to know what we plan for, <clears throat> and we plan for ring, and, and it's, it starts today. We have a lot of veteran guys that have been in the situations that uh, you know sometimes you need to make it to the, the next step, and um, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun year. And obviously, I hope you know we can stay healthy and uh, and we'll be good. But why not us? I think that's the mindset that we have to have this year, and it has to start in training camp. It has to start tomorrow. Um, everyone has to compete. Everyone has to um, put on their hard hats, and, and you know what? we're. We're one of those teams that's that's haunted now. Like you know, like people want to come out and knock us off. So um, you know, we have to have that chip on our shoulder to say, you know what, we're here with the other top teams in the Western Conference and in the league. That's for sure. I mean, our goal from the today basically on should be winning a championship. Not a. I mean, I'm I'm always go for the best, you know. And then if it doesn't happen, yeah, you're gonna be disappointed. But so what, you know? This is it. I mean, I think this is what you gotta look into it. Gotta work hard. Uh, challenge yourself uh, to do better, uh, and I think we're all on the same page here. So these guys are, are, are legit. I mean, they just love to play the game. I think it's respect both ways, and you know, I, I, for me, it was just making sure I find a way to fit in with these guys, incorporating my game with how they play, and uh, of course, it's pickup, and, and it's just you know, you can't really incorporate it like you're gonna do come tomorrow, but. Uh, that's that's just the way I approach the game. Just you know, I'm the new guy, and I take the initiative of trying to incorporate myself and just still being who I am. You know, I still talk a lot, still try to direct. It was it was funny that like I was just trying to direct, you know, traffic out there like I've been here a couple of years, and it just but it, it helps the young guys. It was funny because Jordan, I don't want to put him on the spot. He was like we were playing, and I was just directing, directing, directing. He's like, no, you keep directing. You keep telling me where to go, and I'll be good. You know, so it's just that's just who I am. I think that which will make our transition together. A lot easier because of that. This is who I am. So, Michael Beasley, what are you interested to, to see what he can bring to the court and, and see what he, you might be able to do with him? Well, it gives us something that we don't have. He's uh, tremendously athletic, can play, uh, can defend threes and fours. You know, every team in the league is playing stretch fours, and uh, he can play those guys defensively. And uh, obviously, his skills with the basketball uh, are tremendous. Uh, very good score one on one facing up. I think he'd be tremendous playing at you know the elbows, uh, playing in pick and rolls, and uh, you know he's just he's a, the kind of athlete uh, that uh, you know uh, we don't really have since uh, the Rudy Gay trade. Like I said many times before, it's the different paths to the top of the mountain. When you get there, it's one view. You know, my 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 road, my my career has not been beautiful, but uh, like like I said, man, I'm I'm here to look forward and. and and, and uh, take, take hold of this opportunity. Before I say goodnight, I need to spend a few moments talking about football. Last weekend was epic. The Memphis Tigers will host Houston this Saturday at 6 o'clock, went to Cincinnati, and routed the American Conference preseason favorite Bearcats 41-14 in the biggest win so far in the Justin Fuente era. 
Meanwhile, in the Magnolia State, Ole Miss silenced Alabama 23 to 17 and Mississippi State clobbered Texas A&M 48 31 to combine for the greatest day in the state's pigskin history. The unbeaten Rebels and unblemished Bulldogs are now tied for third in the Associated Press Top 25 poll. Simply amazing. And that'll do it for now. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The Lighting Source, major line distributor of commercial and industrial lighting, including hard to find bulbs and fixtures, as well as a broad range of LED products. With 35 years' experience servicing lighting needs, The Lighting Source proudly sponsors Sports Files.